So as I've been building out this prototype, one of the issues I ran into was basically when you're trying to prompt AI to refine your entire website or even to like add a new page, I have these two buttons down here. One is for refining everything on the site and the other one is for refining a individual page. So if you wanna add a new page, for example, like a gallery page, one thing that I've seen is that sometimes it would try to like implement a header from scratch, even though I already have like a header that's in the index page. And I also have a nice looking footer down here. And this is a pretty trivial problem if you're using like React or Vue or any type of component based library, because you basically could just make a header component and then include that in every page. And then when I prompt AI to create a new gallery page, for example, please create me a gallery page, which shows a bunch of nice pictures. And I'm gonna go ahead and just say refine website. And that should kick off hopefully and create a gallery page. And then it should hopefully link to it in the header. I may have to reprompt this to tell it to update the header because I didn't do that. But now you'll see that I have a gallery page. And if I go to it, we have a bunch of nice images here. We have the same header and footer. So someone left a comment and mentioned web components. And honestly, I've never used web components before. And I figured why not try using web components? So if you don't know what web components is, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. It shouldn't be too long of a video. So let's just dive into it. So if I were to inspect this header and show you the code. So I have this custom header component and down here, you'll see that there's a footer component. And these are actually created by using web components. So whenever I prompt my website builder to create a new page, I do tell it to try to reuse whatever components that already exist in my application. So one thing we can do here is I'm gonna click on this drop down and I'm gonna to go to my header component and it should be able to show, I'm not sure why it's not showing this really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this code button and we can kind of look through the code of the header component. Now, what I wanna point out is that there is a web component here. It defines a class called header component. And then you basically extend this HTML element and you can define some inline CSS. So the cool thing about web components is the CSS that's in the component is basically isolated. So technically you could have these AI systems build a bunch of random widgets and components. Like you could have a weather widget, you could have a ticket sale widget or something. And then all these different websites could pull in these web components and display them on their site. So we have a bunch of styles here. One thing you will notice is that I do have some CSS variables. So I have like a global styles at CSS, which defines a bunch of generic colors for the theme of the site. And then the web component can actually access those when it's trying to style how the top navigation kind of looks. But another important part I wanna show you, if I scroll down to the very bottom of this web component, we actually have built-in JavaScript. So like the JavaScript that's related to, uh, you know, showing the hamburger menu when we're on mobile view and toggling out and toggling back in the mobile view menu, that is all encapsulated in this web component as well. So the code that's in the component is kind of isolated from our page in a sense. You'll see that instead of saying like document.query selector all, it's doing this dot shadow root. So the web component has like this internal root where it contains all the DOM elements that you can then use selectors to grab and modify and attach event listeners to. Sorry that there's no syntax highlighting. I need to add that to this, uh, this preview sheet. But the last thing I want to talk about with web components is once you define this header component class, you can say custom elements define, and then you can say what you want the tag to be. So if I go back to the header and remember, this is defined by this tag header component, and that's going to basically inject that web component right there in the page, which if I look at the JavaScript, there should be some JavaScript that's loaded uh, somewhere in this iframe. So over here, there's a, a head component and you'll see in the script, it's loading in a type of module and it's pulling in that header component and the footer component. So the same idea with the footer, it's its own web component with its own inline styling. And this is the first time I've ever actually used the web component. I know I'm very slow to try new things, but I will say that this is a very interesting concept because I don't have to pull in React. I don't have to pull in Vue. I don't have to pull in all these other component-based frameworks that honestly just add in a bunch of bloat. I just have a nice static application. And then anytime I need to share something between these pages, I could just define a new web component and then use it. So let's try to finish out that gallery page uh, modification I talked about. So I'm gonna say, please link to the gallery page in the header. So the way the code works is when I type into that prompt and click submit, what's actually going on here is it's trying to refine a page. So I have this refine page concurrently. And if it's trying to create a new page, it'll actually call create page concurrently, but we're actually refining a page right here. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna fetch every 
page that's in my application and then every page has a description. So if I look at the schema real quick, you'll see in the page model, I have a description and then I have like a path. So I can use this to store web components in my database. And then later I can ask AI like, hey, what are the relevant components or pages in my system that you could potentially reuse when you're building out the changes that I prompted you? Okay, so I basically ask OpenAI, I say, here are all my things, give me the most relevant. I grab the most relevant. And then I basically pass that to another system prompt and I say, hey, refactor the current page that I want to modify that's relevant to my prompt and then do the changes that I asked. Again, this is all like a prototype. There's a lot of stuff I need to kind of play around with the prompting. One thing I can tell you with certainty is when you're building on AI applications, you end up spending a ton of time making sure your prompts seem like they're good. And like I, on my icon generator, I wasted like hours, like legit hours, just making sure my prompts were good because Changing the wording of your prompt can really change the outcome of how the AI kind of outputs. So hopefully this is done. I don't know why the styles is still loading forever, but that's probably a bug. Let me just do a hard refresh. And now we have a gallery link in the header. So let's click it. That takes us to the gallery page. You can see that we have all of our nice little images here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just ask this to refine this page individually. I'm gonna say when a user clicks on a image in this gallery, Please show a full screen modal with a nice uh, dark background, which is closable to show the larger image. Let's see if this can actually do some nice AI modifications to this page individually so that I get that nice open the image when I click it functionality. So it's kicking off a change to this gallery route. It's done now. And let's see if it actually does anything. Right now it's not actually doing anything. Let's do a hard refresh. I'll go back to the gallery. So now let's click on one of these images and I will say that it's loading a different image because the way I'm doing the images, I'm just like finding a third party API that delivers images and it's probably just getting random images every time I click. So I need to find a better way to get placeholder images where I can give it a SHA or a hash so that I can give back the same image every single time. So one more thing I wanna demo is I'm gonna try refining the entire application and reskin it to a different theme. So I'm gonna say I want to change the style theme to be in a green uh, theme. Please restyle the entire application to have a green theme. And if I click refine website, this is going to probably modify the styles at CSS. This is where all the global styles are stored for your static site. But then it's probably also gonna go through some other pages as well and try to update them. Okay, it looks like it actually only updated the style. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a hard refresh. And now we have a nice, green theme, literally any page you go to now is going to be themed in that nice um, type of style. Let's say if we can add a little bit of border around these images. Can you add a nice green border around these hoverable images? Go ahead and just run that. And that'll be the last prompt I kind of do in this video. The video is already kind of running a little bit longer than I wanted to. All right, that's done. Let's click a hard refresh here. And then we're going to go and just hover over these cards. And notice that we have a nice green border around these images now which is pretty cool. All right, so that's where I'm at with the prototype. I think this is the second night in a row I've kind of just been vibe coding, adding some features to this. I'm pretty happy with the uh, amount of progress I made and how powerful this is. I am using OpenAI GPT-40 for the code generation, which I will say using the GPT-40 model doesn't seem like it's as good as generating code as using uh, Claude. So my next steps are probably hook this up with Claude, use Claude 4 with an Anthropic API key, and see if I can get this to generate nicer looking sites. Because right now the pages, they look they don't look bad, but they're just very plain. And I've noticed that when I try to refine a page, sometimes it just doesn't seem like it knows how to do design very well. Anyway, the point of this video was about web components. So hopefully you learned a couple new things about what a web component is, how you can define them, how you can use them, and how they may help uh, break out smaller chunk size components and use throughout your uh, application kind of like you would with like a React component, but without all the extra framework bloat or the build system that you need to even get that stuff working. Have a good day and happy coding.